YouTube family, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be working on the Viking costume just a little bit more. Probably gonna be a short video, pretty easy video. I'm still sniffling, this weather is still bonkers, but bear with me, I apologize for that. So what we're gonna be making today is a little leather glove. It's a fingerless glove, but it does go over the palm of the hand and around the top set of knuckles, like that. It will be laced up with parachute cord on the side and stitch together on this side. Otherwise, there's three stitches. That ought to be pretty simple. I'm going to be using the same stitch on this piece that I did that we used on the uh, the leather vest. We're making a leather glove that covers the top part of the hand and wraps around the palm of the hand. These don't fit me or I'd put it on to model it for you. It's just too small. <laughs> First thing we'll need to make our leather glove is our pattern. And for this one, we are using a duct tape pattern again. It's three parts. There's the thumb piece that goes over the back of the thumb and the inside and outside of the arm, like so. I will show you guys how to make these in a later video. Now I've already made one, so we just have to make the other one but it's super simple. I think we may come back and decorate this also, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. The next thing we're going to need is the leather. Now I'm sticking with the same oil tan brown and black hide that I've used on everything else so that the whole project stays cohesive. All right, so next let's go ahead and get the pattern traced out onto the leather and then we will get this sucker made. Okay, our leather is cut out. It's actually two pieces that I have, instead of cutting this line here, I went ahead and left it whole so that when we sew this together, that piece does not have thread on it when the person's wearing it and therefore will not irritate their hand. Also, there's no need to cut that out because it wraps around and matches up perfectly anyways. But the next thing we need to do is we're going to scrape a line if you will, put a stitching groove on this leather. This particular tool right here, this is a stitching groover, is adjustable, has a little blade on the side. The post will drag along the edge of the leather and then the little cutter here, the little blade, will peel off a layer of the leather. Now, on this particular stuff, uh, it is not going to cut a groove per se, it will really just barely take off some of the coloration on top. It's a pretty ineffective tool on this. I like the way it looks because it will leave a little bit of that lighter colored leather beneath the stitches so that it adds just a little bit of extra detail to the piece. It's also kind of a pain because it takes a lot of effort to hold this stuff still and get the line to appear thanks to it being very thin, flimsy, and oil tan. Next thing we need to do is sew this bad boy up. 
it's actually a pretty simple thing to sew and we will be using a stitching hole punch pliers thing i don't even actually know the official name for it anymore but it has a spike with a little disc with a hole in it where you can adjust the size of stitching hole you want and you just crimp to punch a hole in it now on this particular piece i am just going to eyeball the holes i don't really care if they're evenly spaced out I, I know I made this big gash here and I don't actually mind that either because all this is going to need to look old and weathered and ancient anyway but I will just start here at the end and I will punch holes every little bit try to keep them evenly spaced but if they're not perfectly spaced out that's fine they don't need to be super close those need to be 10 million stitches this can be a pretty simple project to sew up. The only thing we need to keep in mind is that we need to have a matching stitching hole on each piece where it will go together. So however many we punch on this side, we also need to punch on the other side. To make that easier, I'm going to use my red Sharpie for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives me a dot that I can match up and I can punch faster rather than having to do this for every single hole. And red doesn't show up that drastically on this leather. So I don't have to worry about it looking ridiculous. By the time we're done, it will be basically unnoticeable. But as you can see here, I'm just matching these holes up one to another. As I'm punching the holes, I have a reference to how many and where they're at. So the things continue to be lined up. And there you have it, stitching holes on that. To sew this up, I will be using this very heavy duty wax thread and I'm going to just pull off plenty more than I think I will need. Because it's always better to have too much of this stuff than not enough. Not that running out is a big deal. Adding on is relatively easy when it comes to this sort of stitching. But I just prefer to not need to do that. Now we just loop our thread through like that. A neat trick that I don't often do, but I probably should, is you can take your needle and thread and you can come back over here towards the end and actually can actually press the needle through the thread like so and then pull it down over the thread to lock it on to the needle that way when you're sewing it doesn't actually pull off of the needle so when we sew this up the way I like to sew this type of piece is with what I call a baseball stitch I don't actually know if it's what they use for baseballs or not but we're going to start on the inside of the leather and we'll put our needle through from inside out and pull them evenly until we use up all the thread. Then cross over and go back down through so we have basically two stitches through the same set of holes. Then we'll pull that snug. Now what I like to do here, and I think it's important, and this is the point of this particular stitch, is we want the leather to be edge to edge. We don't want it to fold up or crinkle over or anything like that. <coughs> so we make sure that we pull the thread tight enough so that the leather sits edge to edge, but that's it. Now we're going to come up through the middle and then go back down on the opposite side. Up through the middle and then back down through the opposite side. And you can pull those snug and it leaves you with this little baseball stitch looking set of lines. On the inside, 
it's the same thing basically. Now we'll just do that all the way down. Now we are at the end of our stitch. So let's make sure we pull all this nice and tight. Then it looks good all the way down, which it does. Now we'll take our thread and cross it over so that it comes out on the outside. And I'm going to loop it over, go back in with both needles. And then go back to the outside one more time. I know there's a lot of thread going through those couple of holes, but that's okay. Now, normally you would tie the knot for this on the inside, but I, in particular, want this to look like it's weathered and worn out. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a simple square knot on the outside. Then we will take this handy dandy little tool that I acquired just the other day. It is the Beadsmith Cord Zap, runs on two double A's. And when you push this little button, that little end gets burning red hot. And we're just going to take that and melt those right off. And because this is wax, you can kind of touch it together and it will melt all that wax in there and make one nice coagulated mess. Handy dandy duh, $4 thing I bought at an outlet store. You can buy them on Amazon, I believe, for about seven or eight dollars next we need to sew this little piece into this hole for the thumb so we're going to do the same thing again which is just punch a bunch of holes now these two holes here on the main piece are actually going to be what i use for the point of the thumb as reference so i'm not going to mark that particular hole but I am going to mark these other ones. Now I want all my knots to end up at this particular point. So it's imperative that I start from the most difficult end of this whole thing. And we're just gonna do the same thing again. And then once we're here at the end, we do the same thing we've done before and just push these whole needles through to the outside by crossing over. It's pretty. Now that I'm here, instead of crossing over and making this big knot mess like that, I'm going to sew through the knot that I've already made. And now here, I'm going to remove this needle And I'm just going to put a square knot here with these because I want this big ugly mess. I want it to look like this was repaired at some point. And having this bulky pile of stuff there gives it that feeling that somebody had to fix this at some point. 
And I'll take my other piece of scrap from before. And same thing. Start from the tip. So a key note here is that this particular stitch does not look that fantastic for most things. It's not something I would use on a lot of products. But on this particular costume, the imperfections are key to making it look like it's old, like it's vintage, like it's been used and seen some days. To make it look like it was made 2,000 years ago. The, the appeal is that older, more well-worn-in product makes it unique, makes it essentially timeless. Melt it down. Then we have this big glob of ugh, grossness. But <coughs> our thumb hole looks pretty freaking cool. Now all we need to do is sew up the part over here that touches the hand. <coughs> right here. With just a few holes. And we will be done with this product. And that's so far as all the waste we've had in thread. Okay, now we just need to punch our 550 cord holes, our parachute cord holes. And that will be that. For punching our parachute cord holes, I'm going to be using a pair of ProMaster smart and simple hand punches. This hand punch is also hydraulic, so that requires a lot less pressure to do the punching. It's much, much simpler than a lot of other punches. Now on this, I pre prefer to punch the hole right on the edge on the inside of the white gouge line. I'm also using the largest punch on the hand punch. It requires almost no effort at all. Now we need parachute cord. 550 parachute cord in black, 100 feet of it. Now for this, I'm going to just be cutting off, you know, a few feet. It is still better to have too much than not enough. You have to be careful with parachute cord because when you melt it, it gets incredibly hot. And it stays hot for a little bit. Now we're going to start like this one from the inside at the hand part and move up the arm. One pair. Of semi matching. Very cool looking. Viking inspired. Arm wrap, band braces, fingerless gloves. Thanks for watching guys. If you have enjoyed this content, watching me make costume pieces and eventually photo shoot, video shoot with these costume pieces, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you are not, slap the button down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. It's over, it's over here. Right beside it, there's a bell notification icon so you can get all the notifications for when I upload new videos, go live, post things to the channel, whatever, come back and see me. Share me with your friends and anybody else in the costume cosplay community, the DIY community. They may love to see this content also. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.